Hi, and welcome to lesson four of my Kotlin JavaScript tutorial. Today, we're going to continue working with the DOM, but this time we're going to use the Kotlin HTML Builder, which is a library from JetBrains specifically for the purpose of programmatically building up HTML trees. Let's go back to IntelliJ. So if you recall, our project has two files, an HTML file and a Kotlin file. In the last episode, we built up this HTML tree using the DOM API, but in a strongly typed way because we're using Kotlin. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to leave this here, but comment it out. This time we're going to do the same thing, but using this new library. The purpose of this new library is to kind of have the terseness of the string building API, but the type safety of the tree building API. In fact, we'll even have better type safety. Um, this is a library, so we need to bring in the jar file. In a future episode, I'll show you how to use um, set up a project with Maven or Gradle, but we're keeping things simple, so we'll just bring in the jar file into a live folder. So I'm going to create a live folder in the root of my project, live, and we'll copy the jar file we need into there. So let's go grab the jar file. The project we're using is called kotlinx.html, and as I said, it's by JetBrains. <clears throat> it's an open source and it's on GitHub. Um, the jar files already compiled are in a Maven repository, and we're going to just download them manually. I have that page bookmarked. I'll share the URL with you in the um, notes for this video. So the guy we want is um, right down here. Let me back up a little to the previous page and show you something interesting. So this library, you can see it kind of has two versions of it, a JavaScript version and a Java uh, JVM version. The JVM version runs on the server and this one can run on the client. So what's neat is you can use the exact same API to programmatically build an HTML tree on the server or on the client. So the JVM one could be used um, as a, as a drop-in placement replacement for something like um, JSP another technology for building HTML trees. The client side one could be used um, as a replacement for the string building that we used or, or for something like Angular. So anyways, we want the JavaScript one. We'll grab the latest version and that jar file is the guy we want. So I'll click on that and I'll copy it into the live folder that I just created. Let's go back to IntelliJ. So there it is. I have to add it to my class path. Since we're not using Maven or Gradle, we have to do that on the IntelliJ way. So I'm going to right click and say, add as library. It doesn't know what's inside of that jar file. So I'm going to tell it it's a jar file full of classes and say, okay. And voila, it should be added to our class path. And now we can reference the classes. Okay, so now we're going to say document dot create dot div. Create is in the kotlinx.html package, so I'm so I'm so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I also need to import this div, so I'm gonna say alt enter on that. Now the document object does not have a create um, property. However, it does have a create element property. So create element is the DOM standard. This create thing is specific to the library that we're now using, the Kotlin X HTML. So Kotlin has a neat feature that you can extend other libraries. So that's called an extension function, or in this case, just an extension property. So it's adding this property to document. All right, so now we have our um, Create, and we're calling this function called div. So this piece of code here is functionally identical or functionally equivalent to this piece of code. So just to test to see if it's working so far, let's try just that. So we'll say val div equals, and we also have to add the div to root. So we'll grab this piece of code down here where we've already done that. So there won't be any visible UI, but we should be able to go into the the DOM inspector and see that this div was created. So let's do a command F9. 
and let's go to our HTML page and say, open in browser. And there's nothing as we mentioned. So I'm going to go to my JavaScript console and it says air loading module, it's dependency Kotlin X HTML JS was not found. So it's looking for something. So with that said, let's go back to IntelliJ and figure out what it's looking for. I'm going to go to my project window and let's look into the out folder. That's the generated stuff. So there is our code. That is our KT file compiled to JavaScript. We've seen that before. There's the Kotlin standard library compiled to JavaScript. We've seen that before. So here's the new guy. This is the library we are attempting to use compiled to JavaScript. So what we have to do is we have to add it right here. So let's do that now. There. Now we can use that library. Now something to note is we're starting to add a number of script files, script tags to our main HTML page, which that's okay. I will say though, in my normal workflow, I don't bring things in this way. I use the ES6 import and export functionality, which I'll show you that in a future episode. But for now, we'll keep things simple and just use the script tag. All right, let's go back to main. And um, actually, let's go back to our our um, running example. So I'm going to I'm going to do another build command F9 and go back to our HTML page and hit refresh. The error is gone and let's go into elements and let's expand this div. So there's the there's the root div. That's the one that we added directly to our HTML. And below it, we have an empty div tag. That's the one we programmatically added using this new API we're discussing. So that worked. Moving on, let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's now, um, let's take that div and let's pass it a Lambda function. Now, if you're only passing one thing to, to, to a function and it's a Lambda, you can skip the parentheses. So you could pass a lambda like this, but if it's the last argument, like let's say you're doing this, if it's the very last argument, you can actually pass it like that. And if it's the only argument, you can pass it like that. So we're calling a function called div and passing it one argument of type lambda function. Let's go into this lambda function. So in this lambda function, we're going to basically create, um, we're going to call another function called h1. Import that. And we'll call another function called button. So what that does is creates an h1 and adds it as a child to this div. This creates a button and adds it to a child of this div. So our H1 doesn't really have any text, nor does our buttons. There's nothing much interesting to look at, but still let's go see if it's working so far. So I'm going to do a command F9 to build. And I'm going to go back to our browser and hit refresh. And let's see what we have. There's our root div. There's our child div. There's our H1 and there's our button. So it's working so far. All right, continuing on. Let's go, and if we want to give children to h1, the way we do it is we pass it a lambda. So, by the way, what we're using here is simply functions. We're not doing anything other than calling Kotlin functions. So let me back up a little bit and explain that. So I think I already mentioned right here, that's just a function call. And if you want to take a function call that takes a another function, you do it like that. And if you want to, and as a syntactic convenience, if the only thing you're passing or the last thing you're passing is a lambda, you can just stick it at the end like that. And that's what we're doing. And the same thing for here, we're just calling a function and returning this function Essentially, for, uh, h1 returns an h1, 
the h1 function returns an h1 element and appends it as a child to that div so that's what we're doing so moving on if we want to pass children to h1 we pass it a lambda so again we could we could do this but we'll use the syntactic shortcut and do it like that so that's a kotlin thing now we're going to pass this a um, text child and so the way you pass a text child is use the plus so we're essentially calling the plus function is what we're doing and we'll say hello html or let's say kotlin x html and we'll do the same thing for the button hello kotlin x Oops, this is going to be click me. So pretty much same thing we did before, just using a new technique. And also we're going to give this button a event handler. So we're going to say on click function equals. And here we give it our click function, our click function in the form of a lambda. So let's go and say print clicked again. And there you have it. Three ways to do the same thing. First, we did string building. Then we did the DOM API tree building. And now we're using Kotlin's proprietary HTML builder. Let's see if it works. Command F9. Refresh. And there's our H1. There's our button. And if I click it, it says clicked again. So what we just did is we used a Kotlin DSL. DSL stands for Domain Specific Language. And it's a domain specific language that is created, that is used inside of the language. What it really is, is an API. It's an API, but it's an API that almost looks like it's its own language. But really, we're just doing function calls and passing Lambda functions, which is Kotlin stuff. Um, I didn't cover that because um, this is more on HTML, not necessarily on how to use Kotlin. But you got exposed to using a Kotlin DSL. All right. Till next time.